Hello and welcome to this presentation of IBM Data Power Operations Dashboard, or DPOD for short. DPOD provides a centralized view of all monitored gateway devices via its web console. This demonstration will give you an overview on how to work with the console and perform the most common operations. We will show you how to log into the console, how to use its menus and main functions, how to use filters, and how to create custom dashboards. First, let's log into the web console. When you first install Depod, a predefined user with administrative privileges is automatically set up for you. This user is called admin and its password is admin user. Note that since we're using an administrative user in this demonstration, all of the web console's features are enabled. When you log in with your own user, some of these options may not be visible, depending upon your user's privileges. Now that we've logged in, you can see Depot's web console. At the top, in black, is the console's top banner. Let's look at it more closely. First, next to Depot's title, we can see the environment name, in this case, Dev1. To the right, you can see the user menu. If we click Preferences, we get to the User Preferences screen. Here, you can configure the appearance of your web console, your home page, etc. These options will affect the appearance of the web console only for your user. Next in the user menu, you can select to see the new features added to your current Depot version as well as to previous Depot versions. In the same menu, you can find your current Depot version number, which is very useful when using the Depot literature or when contacting support. More to the right, you can see the Products Views menu, which allows you to select either Gateway or API Connect View. Depot supports monitoring both IBM products, Gateway and API Connect. Each of these has its own view within Depot's web console. IBM Gateway appears here as IDG, which is the product's previous name. As you can see, the Gateway view is currently selected. Let's see how this works. We'll select the Gateway view and go to the Transactions view under Investigate on the left navigation bar. As you can see here, the dashboard shows all the information Depot has collected using Gateway terminology. For example, service name, operation, URI, etc. If, however, we select the API Connect view and again go to the Transactions page, you can see that collected data is displayed in the terminology of API Connect. For example, you can see catalog information, space, plan, API name, application name, etc. For the rest of this demonstration, we will use the Gateway view. However, Everything we present is also relevant to the API Connect view. Last on the right on the top banner, we have the Auto Reload button. Here, we can select to manually refresh the data displayed to us by the console, or we can select how often the console will auto refresh. To the left of the screen, you can see the console's green navigation banner, known as the navigation bar. You will use this bar very often when working with the console, as it allows you to navigate to the console's main sections. Let's go over all the options on this banner from top to bottom. The first is Depot's dashboards. Here you can see all the information collected from monitored devices, presented in various dashboards. These include all sorts of tables, charts, and graphs. The second option on the navigation bar is Investigate. This section shows you the transactions executed on all your monitor devices and allows you to investigate various problems by drilling down into specific devices, 
services and transactions. The third option is Explorer. This section shows you configuration data collected from monitor devices, as well as track changes made to service objects and device configuration. Depot periodically samples and stores all service configuration information from all monitor devices. This information is displayed here. In this section, you can also see the DevOps portal, which allows developers to perform configuration operations on monitored services based on security roles. The fourth section is reports. Here you can issue summary reports on the data collected from monitor devices by running existing reports, creating new ones, scheduling periodic reports, etc. The last option is the Manage section. This section is only available to administrators, providing various capabilities used to manage the depot network. Through this section, you can perform various tasks. You can manage your depot servers, configure monitor devices, perform maintenance tasks, manage web console users, create alerts, and much more. At the bottom of the navigation bar, you can see the notifications button. As you're working with the console, the console will notify you in various cases. For example, when an operation you've executed has succeeded or not, when there is an internal malfunction in Nipod, etc. These notifications will appear at the top of the screen, and the most recent messages will be saved in the notification list. Let's see an example. We'll change the IP address of a monitor device to the wrong address. As you can see, when we do this, we get a red error notification message. Now let's correct the IP address. Now that we've corrected the error, we get a green notification message that the device was updated successfully. If we now go to the notifications button at the bottom of the navigation bar, we see a list of all the notifications we've just received. It's important to note that this notification list is only saved for the duration of your current web console session. At the very bottom of the navigation bar is the console's help feature. When you click help, Small green help icons will appear next to various fields in the console, providing a short explanation for these fields. You can see how this works in the Investigate page, for example. Now let's go over the web console filtering functionality. The Depot console allows you to select precisely which data you want to see. By selecting various filters, or by entering search criteria to predefined filters. Whenever you select specific filter elements on one screen, these filters will be retained in other screens as well, if this is applicable. These filters will be retained until you change or reset them. This allows for an easy and seamless transition between the console's different pages as you investigate a given issue. Let's see a quick example of this feature. We'll go to the System Activity Dashboard and select the time frame and device. As you can see, you can zoom into a specific time frame by simply dragging the mouse across the graph. After doing this, we can see the filtering elements we've selected displayed above. Now, if we go to the Recent Activity Dashboard, the filtering parameters we've selected will be retained. And they will also be retained if you go to the Investigate page, for example, or to any other page in the web console that supports these filters. There's another very simple way to use filters, which is to use graph legends. When you click one of the items in a graph legend, as we do here, the console will select a filter with the value you've selected. One of the most useful features of one console's filters is that you can easily save them for your own use or for sharing with others. Since the state of the filters is stored in the URL, you can simply grab the URL from the address bar on your browser 
or get it by clicking share and copying the link. Once you have the URL, you can then bookmark it for your own repeated use or send it to a friend via email. If your friend is authorized to access that page, he can then simply copy paste the URL to his own browser and this will immediately bring him to the same page with all the filters you've chosen. Moreover, the console allows you to save your most useful features. For example, let's save our current filtering options. To see how this works, let's choose to momentarily reset our chosen filter and then go back to console's default view. Now we can see all of Depot's collected data without filters according to our own users' privileges. Now, if we go to the Favorite Filters menu, we can see the favorite filter we've just saved. Here, we can also change filter names, delete them, etc. If we select our previously saved filter, the console will go back to displaying data according to this filter. In general, the favorite filters you've saved will only be available for your current user. Another important feature of Depod console, which is available in many tables, is to export the displayed data to a CSV file. If we go to the Investigate section and click the blue gear at the top right of the main table, we can select to export its contents. After several seconds, the CSV will be exported to our hard drive. The last topic in this presentation is the Web Console's Custom Dashboards feature. This feature allows administrators to create new dashboards, which will be available to all the users, which then can concentrate data in a way that is most comfortable for your own needs. To demonstrate this, let's first go to several figures in the console dashboards and choose to add them to a new custom dashboard, as you can see. After populating our dashboard with the desired figures and tables, we can navigate to the new dashboard by selecting its name, which appears under Custom. As you can see, the dashboard includes all the figures and tables we've added to it. Here, you can view the collected data by using filters, as you can in any normal dashboard. To edit this new dashboard, you can go to Manage, and under Customize, select the Dashboard Editor. In this menu, you can see all your custom dashboards for the selected product view. You can edit them, enable and disable them, etc. Let's go to the Edit Dashboard page. To change the appearance of a dashboard, we can click Move and Resize and change the relative sizes of its diagrams. We can then save the changes we've made by clicking Update. And if we navigate to our custom dashboard, we can see our recent changes. In this presentation, we've gone over the basic features of Depot's web console. To see more advanced features, as well as installation guides, software updates, troubleshooting scenarios, and more, please see our other videos. We'd like to thank you for joining us and we hope you found this demonstration useful.